Yeah. Okay, well, look, delighted to say now we're joined by Sean Kavanagh, who's come on board as an AIB ambassador for this year's Goal Mile. This year, AIB and Goal are calling on GA clubs to step up together this festive season and host their own Goal Mile to raise funds to support vulnerable communities across the world. AIB is also offering the chance to win uh, €1,000 for their GA club and details on how to enter are going to be in the video description underneath this. Sean, delighted to have you on the show. How are things? Yeah, really good, man. How's things yourself? Not too bad. The first thing we want to ask you about is that it's not so long that you were playing football for Moy in the county intermediate final as player manager, bringing yourself in. You're looking, you're looking around the bench, thinking who can change things with twenty minutes to go, and you're just bringing a mirror out in front of yourself. I, my head's still deceiving me as, as a forty-year-old. I still think I'm a twenty-five-year-old. Uh, so yeah, the crack's good anyway, and, and, and I definitely heard plenty, plenty about it from the opposition as well. <laughs> up, up for abuse. And like, but you you have now decided to retire, have you? And was that a tough decision to make? Again, it, it is tough. Uh, even as a forty year old, I see John Doyle knocking around there as a forty five year old, and I'm, I'm feeling a wee bit jealous. Or uh, yeah, so again, it's even yet in the back of my head, my mind, you're always wondering. I think I'm a typical man in that sense. Like I'm always wondering and going, nah, you know what? I still, I still might, might, might get more out of myself, but. Yeah, I think I have to grow up at some point. I have four young kids. I have a lot going on with the business. Uh, at some point, I'm going to have to stop the selfishness of, of trying to do things for Sean Kavna and maybe do, do things for, for my kids and, and for, my, for my business and, and, and everything else. But that, I, I totally enjoy, enjoyed the crack um, playing, managing uh, with the club, and we had a really good run. Um, probably could have, could have ended on a couple of more positive notes than we did, but uh, definitely a positive one regardless. Michael, he'll be dragged out of retirement shortly, won't he? I dem- well, he could be dragging himself out of retirement, yeah. Um, <laughs> how, how did you find the management, Sean? Um, was that your first kind of dipping into that kind of arena? Uh, yeah, look, I enjoyed it. Uh, it. It was one of those ones, because I only come in mid-season as well, I didn't really have the, the, the sort of the, the difficult part of maybe trying to keep motivating guys through pre-seasons or, or early seasons again it was just through in the games and and I kind of enjoyed the, the buzz of it and obviously knowing the, the lads and the players that I was involved with already kind of knew their strengths and I, 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 as you always do you always talk about how you how you could be doing things better yourself so when, when you're handed the opportunity to do it better yourself it's 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 do or die sort of feeling but no I really, really enjoyed it and I think I think we got we got a real good bounce out of the group and, and we went on a really good run uh, yeah, just a bit strange the whole sort of player manager thing and, and trying to take yourself on and then shouting to the sideline here. Look, we need to make a couple of changes. <laughs> so, <laughs> that, that, definitely weird in that sense, but yeah, definitely positive. And with your brother Colm in the team as well, was it any different playing alongside him than it would have been to manage him? Uh, yeah, he just give me a bit more abuse when he's managing, like, he just sort of uh, he wouldn't be long telling you when things are going wrong. But I no, look, it's it, um, I, I think. I think because like I've I've been playing playing for the Moy since nineteen ninety eight, so sort of twenty five years in. I think I think I, I probably most of the lads that were playing this year grew up watching me, I suppose, play for Tyrone and, and play for the Moy and stuff. So I think there was that sound cheesy about it. I think there was a level of respect there that the, the lads knew that I was deep deeply sort of rooted in, in getting the best out of the group. And because of that, it, it was it was somewhat easy going in. It's it's not easy as it ever is trying to drop lads or take lads off that maybe feel that, that they deserve more game time and stuff. But 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 I think people knew that I was doing it for the right reasons. And I, obviously the the sort of dynamic when when you're one of those when you when you're like I'm a, I'm a deep 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 my man. Um, and I don't think I'll ever get away from that. And and because of that, I think it, 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 I I got a great buzz whenever we won and. I think everyone felt that because I was one of them that uh, it, uh, you know they were they were going to the well and, and going that little bit harder than maybe what they were previously when it was sort of not my men involved. And did did you still bring out the shimmy, the trademark shimmy? <laughs> I, I caught a few men, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it's still there. Uh, even even a lot of the lads in training are are, are still falling for it these days. So. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, very much still there. I, I, I sort of, sort of hold it back for 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 uh, party trick moments more so than using it for the same functional sense that I used to use it with. <laughs> how did you find Sean with your two hats on as manager and player? How did you find the split season? 
there's no split about it. Like, I, I don't know. Everyone keeps talking about the split season, but like, you know, the, like our club started training in, in February this year and whatever, we finished up there last Sunday. Um, so I'd be trained for 10 out of 12 calendar months. Um, and the counties, sure, they're back training there now the last sort of six weeks. So they're training from September or October through to July or August. So I, I don't, I don't, I don't totally see what the split season has done. I think if anything, it's probably taken away the sense of occasion that we used to have with an All Ireland final being the end of September or the international rules that used to come in October or November or something. I think we've lost that sort of big day and we crammed too much into to that sort of June, July time where all those big games that should be, there should be a big build up to it, a big buzz about it, and there's loads of sort of narratives. I, I just think there's just too many games we play on top of one another and, and I kind of sit there in an RT studio sometimes a little bit hypnotized with what's going on and trying to work out where the meaning is to, to a lot of the games. Like whenever you're sitting, remember like was it the National League final was Mayo and Galway and sort of sitting there and going, uh, do, do you think Mayo will ever, or do you think Mayo will play their full team or will, will they want to win this because they've got a game in six days time in the championship and then they lose the championship and you're like, ah, oh, don't worry, they've got another four games in the super in the in the group stages and they got and then you, you, st- you still after that if you keep on losing that you still get through so I, I think i think we've lost that big like you know you start to look back at your childhood anyway when you get older but for me like those big games that i used to go to the knockout games between throwing and Derry in 1985 peter Calvin scoring i don't know 10 out of 12 points thrown down to 13 men Sam getting sunburned to a crisp, burned to a crisp on the hill in, in Clonus. As a 40 year old man, I, I still remember what I was wearing that day, what the feeling was when Canavan scored the winning point. Um, and I now go to games and I go, God, I, can't, I don't even know what the point of that game was. And I think that's that's an annoyance for me that we crammed a lot, lot in, but we'd lost so much. And there's too big of a gap between an All Ireland final in whatever, July or August. And now there's no real proper sort of top end football until like February next year. I think I think that's wrong. We we have to ask you about Mickey Hart taking over Derry. How big of a shock was it? And how much like distaste has it generated in, in either county? Yeah, it's it's, it's bizarre. Like I, I could I could never, ever, ever have imagined it. And I don't think anyone could have. I was talking to Sam Leroy last week actually, and he was sort of saying he, he never ever thought it was possible either. And I suppose as someone who, who soldiered so long with Mickey, I think he, he took me as a under 21 in 2002 and then whatever, right through to 2017 there. He, he, he was a really, really deep rooted traditional Tyrone man. Everything was always about Tyrone. No other county mattered. It was just dismiss everything around you. Tyrone's only gig in town. Anyone who goes outside of Tyrone, outside of Tyrone, forget about them. So it, it's just, it's just a, a very strange thing. It, 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 I can only, I can only imagine it's done out of his, his ambition, obviously to, 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 to win again. And I, I think when he's with Tyrone, Tyrone people didn't really mind, obviously because, or whenever he's with Loud, they didn't really mind because Loud wasn't really that much of a, without any disrespect, it wasn't that much of a sort of competitor, but. To go to our, our our probably traditionally, if you ask most strong people, who is the old enemy? Who is the it's like the Alex Ferguson going to Liverpool? The old enemy is Derry and Tyrone. Like I think there was there's probably more rivalry with them than anyone else. And they're the best team in Ulster the last couple of years. So to have that feeling and or that thought in my mind of of Mickey standing in a, a Tyrone championship or league game, trying to beat Tyrone, it just yeah bizarre doesn't doesn't i still struggle to get my head around it i know i i couldn't do it but obviously he he has that that sort of drive and ambition to to to, to get back to the top table and fair play to him hope it works well don't worry hope it works out for him, <laughs> <laughs> at, at, at the same time you, you have to have a lot of respect that that's the ambition he has at the age of whatever he is 69 or 70. is there any sense sean because it didn't finish into all maybe how he wanted it would kind of feel like he was push to the door a small bit that it's kind of like a bit of okay i'm gonna prove you wrong and prove that i can do it if i i, I prefer i prefer to do it with tyrone but that opportunity is no longer there so i'm gonna go and do it somewhere else it, like is he i don't know is he that type of person 
It's, it's hard to know. Like you're, you'd never, like, I'll be honest, I have, I have no idea um, because I just know he, he is the type of person that regardless, like I, I think I think the feeling of him not being at the top table and maybe with some of the games he maybe was with in Louth, he maybe felt that like if it wasn't being shown on the Sunday game or it wasn't um, being talked about, like, I, I think I think he'd have struggled because when he was with Tyrone, like, it always was box office regardless. We were always somewhat close to, to winning and being at the top table. Every year I played with him in Tyrone was always about, sort of the year it was, look, we're going to win Sam Maguire. And by the way, he was brilliant at, at sort of making you believe that you were going to win every year. I don't think he could have done that with Lau. So I have no idea whether there's an element of revenge in it whatsoever. I don't think anyone's ever going to know that. But I, I do know that he's the type of man that will want to win the change room and go, we're going to win Sam Maguire. And I think that's like he will convince the dairy players very quickly that they're going to win Sam Maguire in 2024. Um, but look, I suppose it's a big risk as well because regardless, there'll be a number of Trump people. There are a number of Trump people that aren't happy with it, that, that feel that they are sort of probably... He probably is the, the, the most well-known Throne GA man going to our biggest rival. So that doesn't sit well with Throne people. And equally, there's a lot of dairy people looking and going, what's a, a Throne man doing in our county? So I don't think he's going to have that level of of uh, protection that, that he, he maybe would have had in Throne, whereby people always saw him as one of us. So, you, you know, you always were somewhat... Uh, guarded from from really deep rooted criticism, so I think that's gone. I think the scrutiny of spotlight is going to be on from day one. It's going to be box office getting popcorn out. Can I just ask you what were the WhatsApp groups like? The former Tyrone player WhatsApp groups like, or anything like that? The night it was announced, or as it started percolating now. <laughs> you don't need you don't need WhatsApp groups to know what Lex and Moxie's feeling. They'll throw it on the Twitter. Like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know, no, no, crack's always good, but look, everyone's exactly the same. As in, you know, Mickey was just incredibly deep rooted in his Tyrone feelings. Like I, I can't, I can't emphasize enough how he just always spoke about being a Tyrone man. That meant more to him than anything else. Tyrone, 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 Tyrone. Everything was just, you know, we were like a Tyrone cult. Uh, so to kind of step out of that and and to go to our biggest rivals, yeah, just, uh, just. Uh, I just struggle to see him. I can't wait to see that there where he is coaching against her own, just to just to just to actually seeing his believing almost. So, is there an element of like when Rafa Benitez went from Liverpool to Everton, albeit there was a break in between of teams, that people will be looking for the first opportunity to have him booted out within Derry? Even like there will be people who want this to fail as quickly as possible. Yeah, yeah, I, I've no doubt, and that's what I mean by like, the spotlight and the scrutiny. I, I've no doubt there'll be a lot of people watching, and and if it wasn't because like anything, it's like you know, it's it's, it's box office. If, if Ferguson was a, was to have gone to Liverpool, there'd be a lot of Liverpool people looking in the field, or uh, or, or, or and the United people looking in the field. So yeah, it, it it just yeah, he's he's definitely put himself back into a real real pressure cooker and. Obviously, if things were to go wrong, if they lose a few games, I don't think he'll have that sort of comfort blanket and, and protection that he might have had where, you know, and now the expectations obviously weren't overly high. Getting them to a Leicester final last year was a real big achievement and it felt like they were on a bit of a journey with them. Um, with Derry, if things were to go wrong, if, if they don't win Ulster this year, it'll be a massive failure. If they don't probably compete in the top end of the National League, uh, maybe make league finals, it'll be a failure. Uh, and and I've no doubt because he's not a dairy man, the, the knives will be out a bit quicker. Does he play the style of football that can bring Derry to an All Ireland in 2024? Because one of the criticisms with Tyrone is that it was still stuck in the dark ages. I and mean, it's very easy for people to be ageist about it and all that kind of stuff. But I don't know how much you've seen of Loud in the last couple of years, probably a bit. But like, do you see him as being the type of guy who can take Derry to the All Ireland? Like typically, I, I I don't I don't think the style he played with us in 2017, or maybe the style he played with Louth um, this year would would be enough to win on All Ireland. But I don't know. Maybe people will argue he was doing that with Louth because that's all he he had in terms of player player capability and quality. Who knows? He could surprise us. Like I, 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 
I, I think, like I even myself was surprised how attacking the like. So I think everyone always looks at who wins the All Ireland and how they won the All Ireland. Like Dublin this year, I felt won the All Ireland, and by by their bravery of putting attacking players in the field, where they actually lined up with with Mannion, was it Small, and Callahan. Like that, that four or five inside bar forwards in their in their starting forward line in All Ireland final day, and and ultimately that 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 I believe that won the All Ireland. So. It's it's gonna take a, a real level of bravery from Mickey to do that. One, I'm not totally sure he has that sort of quality of forwards to do it with. And Derry, um, as in like those out now, Jim Wiggins exceptional, but he probably needs another one somewhere along the way. Uh, and maybe he maybe he'll see it. Maybe a Lockton Murray or something that'll, that'll, that'll appear out of the pack or something, and, and I presume he'll be looking to unearth something like that. But yeah, I think he's gonna have to change. Um, the style and even the way that like, Rory Gallagher had that Derry team really, really refined to play in a certain style of football that 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 probably was very innovative in the way in which they're attacking and pushing their sort of full backs into their full forward line and leaving sort of pockets of space for guys to get one on one with 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 guys and expose opposition weaknesses, etc. Um, I, I I think it could be tricky from from a Derry Derry player perspective. Whereby they'll maybe be expecting that sort of level of, of really, really sort of detailed one on one, maybe coaching that, that maybe had come from Murray Gallagher. And, you know, M- M- Mickey, Mickey, I suppose previously maybe didn't didn't have that level of detail. So, uh, yeah, it, it, it's it's going to be interesting to, to watch how it plays out because it, you can definitely see he's going to, he's going to have, he's going to big, 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 big shoes to fill in, in, in Murray Gallagher and then Kieran Bina after him. And um, he's going to have big expectations to fill because dairy people are ruthless in terms of their uh, approach. And uh, only winning an Ulster and an All Ireland title will will satisfy him. Joe Brawley would probably do some very forgiving columns for him after their first performance <laughs> in the first class. You know, you know, Joe Brawley said rosaries in no time. <laughs> <laughs> A final thing, just for next year, how do you think Tyrone will go? Are they far away or are they getting closer? I don't know. Like we, we, we have to get our act together. That, that's the reality. We 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 had a we've had an incredibly poor two years, so it, it really hasn't been good enough. And like Virgil and Brian will know that more than anyone will. They're very genuine people, but they'll know that uh, we we have to come. Like I, I do believe the the player pool is there. I do believe there's there's like I think we're gonna have to like we've done a couple of years of transition. Twenty twenty four has to be about on. on trusting some of the younger lads to come with a sort of a, a new wave in throne but uh we are a big county i do believe the quality's there but i think bergen and brand's gonna have to start letting letting some of the younger lads at it and, and hoping that, that they'll they'll that, that they'll build a new team that can compete at the top because yeah the last two years we haven't looked anywhere near to be honest mm. well look sean thank you very much for joining us and uh look we'll hopefully chat to you again soon when you're out of retirement Appreciate it. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> <laughs> All the best.